Hey everybody, welcome to Life with Gwen and Joe. My beautiful wife Gwen, I'm Joe. And today our show is going to be about humility before God and staying humble before God. So thanks for joining us. Stay tuned for more. Hey everybody, it's Life with Gwen and Joe. My beautiful wife Gwen, I'm Joe, and today's show is a very special show. Uh, we're going to talk about humility and what God expects of us uh, in humility. And I love this topic because, you know, our, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, He was born in humility, He lived in humility, and He died in humility. And I think that's a very powerful message for us. Definitely. And so, um, you know, today it is pretty right now, but uh, we have just gone through uh, a, a very serious uh, morning here in Middle Tennessee. Tell them what happened, Joe. Well, like Gwen said, it's, it's a beautiful day outside, but last night uh, a tornado touched down here in Middle Tennessee and cut a 50-mile path through Nashville and off to the east towards Cookville and there are many fatalities, many people still missing, there are children missing, and I can't imagine the horror of something like that happening. Uh, the reality of, 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 of watching a child go missing, so one, one of your family members going missing or, or being killed by something like that, terrifying. Yes, I mean, some of the pictures that we've just seen, um, it went through uh, neighborhoods, airports, um, you know, it, it, they, they were finding people up in trees right now in Cookville, just in the last few minutes at the, at the hospital, 16 people that they did bring in have uh, passed away. So we're in a very prayerful mood right now and, and just uh, sober before God. God gives life, God takes away, but if we have the expectation that we're going to have another day, uh, the Bible teaches us and warns us not, not to feel that way. So uh, let's read from James. Chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. Why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast and brag, all such boasting is evil. And uh, we're here, and then the Lord can literally change our lives That's right. in an instant. I mean, we, He definitely created us, and we're gone. We see that in insects and things like that. We don't think anything of it, uh, that they may live for just a few days and then and, and be gone, like some of the beetles that come up every 12 years here in Nashville and then they live for 45 days and that's the end of their life. Or A lot of insects are just seasonal. They come for the year uh, and then they're gone. I mean, it's, it's all kind of animals have a very, a very short life and our lives may seem long and so people try to get away with things and try to live it up, so to speak, before they really humble themselves before God. But boy, how beautiful it is to stay humble and like you say, I, I can't even imagine um, if you're not ready for that on a daily basis. What uh, to wake up? And, you know, this was in the middle of the night. I heard the thunder and the lightning last night. I never heard a siren go off, uh, but this was, of course, north of us. But it, uh, the tornado stayed on the ground longer than I've ever heard of in my life, and just kept going for mile after mile after mile on the ground. Gracie Hanna had some um, video footage of, and she was up in, at night taking a picture of the sky, and the surge of lightning in this in this footage. I mean, usually we we, we think of a lightning bolt that comes down and it, and it kind of vanishes. This was a surge of lightning that just kept going, and it, you know, it was like God was coming down right there. It was it was impressive right. but it, terrifying. It, it was it, it, to me it. It was a definition of the wrath of God. So, um, I, I don't know. I think all of us, you know, just stopping and... It talks about be, it's better to be in the house of, of mourners than it is the house of people, I guess, partying or whatever. 
you know, uh, you know, we got up today and we talked about fasting today. You know, fasting for me, when, when you have that sense of hunger and your body's depleted like that, it, it really, for me, it, it, put, it makes me more spiritually sensitive. It, put, it kind of puts me more in touch with, with what God wants from me. And being in that state of mind, in that, in that physical state, really um, lends itself to being more connected to God. And, and, and you know, I, I, my prayers seem to be uh, deeper and more more serious and um, so fasting for me is a really good thing to put me in a good place with God and and um, to really put me in touch with with what God expects of me on a daily basis. I definitely pray more when I'm fasting. You're crying out to God to help you, you know, just to get through the hunger pains and all that. So it's it's it is truly something that gets us gets us down on our knees and up toward God. Carrying on with the theme of humility, Romans 12, 3, for by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. And, you know, humility to me is, is, is the base level, the platform for, for doing the will of God. Jesus lived in humility, I always go to that. He was such a, a humble man, and his life was, was this humble existence, and he lived in grace. And I, I think by humility is the, is the prerequisite kind of to, to being in that place in your life. I agree with that, that's beautiful. I, I do think about Christ, how he could have, when I think about how much power, how much money, how much resources, who he was, how much position, he had like way over everyone. He was far richer, far more powerful, far more connected to the, 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 the resource of, of everything. And then when Satan came in and tempted him with all of the earth and all the power and all the money and to be able to command anything, to, to be able to turn it into food or whatever he wanted, any, any kind of indulgence he wanted, and yet he looked to God and trusted when God would feed him, when God would give him money, or when God would take care of him, give him shelter, when God, and I, I feel like, you know, here's the Son of God who could have had it all, and yet, yet really trusted God. And look what God did. He didn't put his, even his own son into a palace, and he was born in a manger. He, he definitely wasn't overfed. He definitely didn't have riches. And he didn't have, <laughs> you know, isn't that amazing? He could have been riding in a chariot, but right. he rode around on a donkey. A donkey or by foot? In humility. Yeah. And, um, you know, I come from an industry, I spent many years in an industry that, uh, that I saw a lot of arrogance, a lot of pride, a lot of ego in the entertainment industry. And not to mass generalize, there's a lot of good people everywhere, but in that particular industry, I, I saw so much, um, so much pride and, and lack of humility. Uh, oftentimes, people that are in the performing arts, you know, my, my acting coach, the late and great Sal Dano, used to speak about a pedestal performer or a podium performer. A pedestal performer is one who's imp impressed with their own self-importance. They're after publicity, they want public acclaim, they, 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 they are waiting for accolades. And a, a podium performer, and I, I see Gwen as a, as a podium person who literally just wants to, to do good work, uh, to create a catharsis with people based in truth and based in, 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 in emotion, and, and do a good job for the sake of the job itself, for the sake of the Word of God in your instance. And, Oftentimes, I would see people's motivation uh, in that business to 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 see their name up in lights, and and they, they they want all the publicity they can get. And we used to talk about that in class, um, how that's that's really an improper motivation when you're talking about doing the arts uh, versus just doing a good job. Mm -hmm. And so, I'm very aware of of both sides of that and I myself had to really keep myself in check because that industry and the, and the publicity element of that industry can be very seductive 
and uh, very kind of hypnotizing. So you really have to kind of ask yourself, what is my true motivation for wanting to be in the public eye? You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. you're definitely tested. For oh sure. goodness! So I know you were. That was the reason why so much of it that you said. You know, at some point, I'm giving that up. And we've got. I know a lot of people that have given it up. They were. They were in all kinds of industries where things like that test them and they've chosen God. Life's short. I mean, uh, life is short. We do not know when our next breath is. We don't know. Oh. I mean, uh, last night was very sobering. I know it's very sobering for everyone in this area. And so we're, we're just grateful. I do know that my, one of my favorite verses is Psalm 75. Psalm 75 verses six and seven, no one from the east or the west or from the desert can exalt a man, but it is God who judges. He brings one down, he exalts another. So, and it Amazing. says that he exalts the humble. So that's our, our message for today. I mean, just for us to stop for a moment and, and think about, you know, am I humble or am I boastful, am I proud? Am I planning my life out without God and, and thinking I deserve another day and I'm gonna live tomorrow? Or are you sober and you think, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna even live tomorrow. I need to live this day for God. And, Amen, and, and only God can lift us up. And only God, God lifts up a man, it's God. So if there's someone lifted up, it was God. If somebody is, um, you know, humbled, it's God. And uh, I know that sometimes he allows evil to be lifted up. Satan is there, you know, asking for that. But um, if they're being lifted up in a immoral way, that's not God. We know that's Satan. And uh, that's going to come to a bitter, bitter, devastating end. So I want to live for God and um, pray for us. We're going to try to fast today and fast for God and the glory of God and, um, you know, praying for all these people out there uh, that have been hurt and and we're praying for um you know god god to show all of us what he's trying to say to, to mankind and we pray in jesus name for those people and those families whose lives were affected and devastated last night with the tornadoes here in tennessee uh just ask god to uplift those people and um you never know you never know what day is going to be your last day. Those people went to bed last night probably not imagining what was just about to happen. And so it's a, it's a good message for all of us to stay humble and to uh, put God first. Thank you for joining us. Love y'all. Father God, we just ask you to send the Holy Spirit to comfort these people in their time of need. Our hearts go out to them and their families. Let their loved ones gather around them and give them some type of peace in the middle of all this destruction. Let the officials and the doctors and all those people do their best work to help those people who survived but were injured. And we just ask you to be with us right now in prayer so that they somehow can get through this with the least amount of grief as possible. Dear God, we know how hard it is on you to interact with all of us to try to get our attention. And I pray that not one thing that you have allowed to happen here in this devastation is, is ignored. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, God, that what you've allowed and when your wrath does finally show that it wakes the world up to what they need to get right. God, we're running out of time, and Father, I pray that you wake the world up to make sure that they're getting everything right before you, and this is our prayer in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell so you are notified when we have a new video.